actually I'm, I'm actually super thrilled to be here today. Um, so I recently joined Bridges and Tech a couple of months ago and been joining the sessions every week on a Wednesday. And I'm just happy to be part of a supportive community where we get to learn more about, you know, different people and their technology backgrounds and just learn a little bit more about tech. So special thank you to Joanna for inviting me to speak today. So for today, I just want to go into a little bit about my background um, in technology and then go into a little bit more about enablement and what I do specifically at Complete Software. So background, I, I started out in technology long, long time, um, as early as when I was 18 years old, and I've worked for some pretty big companies. And the reason why I want to focus on some of these larger companies is because tech is literally everywhere. Technology is everywhere. Um, starting off at Chico's, if you're familiar with Chico's, Chico's is actually a woman's clothing brand. Um, they have mall stores all about the country, um, probably about in every single store that you go to. So there's, you're probably familiar with White House Black Market. Um, that's one of their major stores. But locally, they had a distribution center that they opened up, and I was actually a customer service rep there when I was 18. So this is where we actually had paper mailers that they would distribute to all of us across the floor, and we would basically help to upsell the clothing options. Um, the reason I knew that I wanted to be in technology at Chico's was because during this build that they were doing at the warehouse, at the distribution center, um, they had moved us customer service reps to like another floor. And when they did that, they actually broke the email system and I was able to figure out how to enable the ports in Outlook. So that was before Outlook had 365 where you can connect via the cloud. But in the past, you used to have to like enter port information, enter STMP information, just to be able to get your email. So. I configured my computer and then that went on to me configuring everybody's computer and then I was invited to join the POS so point of sales system help desk team and that's where we provided um, remote troubleshooting for the store clerks so that's kind of where I knew like okay I want to get into technology and I wanted to I want to learn a little bit more about that so I went to school got a associates in computer networking. And it's so crazy because when I went to school, I was literally one of three women there that was in computer science classes. Everybody was going, all the women were going into nursing. And I thought it was really strange. A lot of the women were going into nursing degrees or getting teaching degrees or something other than technology. So I actually got the privilege of doing work study for Gwinnett Tech. Um, while I was going to school there. And again, technology came up again and I was building out spreadsheets and revising syllabuses and just helping people with their computers. Kroger, the same thing. Um, I was just a floor associate there. But, you know, they also were trying to break into technology. They were trying to hit that ground running um, for their stores and enable self-checkout. And I actually helped pivot um, by help pivot some of the technology advancements by coming up with some uh, a spreadsheet that will showcase data across all of the stores in that district about how many people were actually using their self checkout devices. So a little bit of data there. And then ultimately I found my love of finance at Sage Accounting Software where I was there for five years providing support for their Sage 50 accounting software system. And because of my background at Sage Accounting, Complete Software actually found me um, through LinkedIn. Um, they're a global company, and we'll talk a little bit more about um, where, who Complete Software is and what exactly I do there. So big question, right? Who is Complete Software? So they were actually founded early in 1991 um, as a basic desktop software system, and they got their real big push in 2008 with their enterprise complete software package. So complete software is actually uh, an accounts payable automation software system. So we provide a variety of different products that goes alongside that particular scope. 
But as far as accounts payable automation, what the core functionality of the software is, is we allow customers or accounts payable teams, particularly people in finance, to send their invoices in through our software system. And we actually extract that data so that it becomes editable for um, small AP teams. So we can help to, you know, lessen the size of your AP team, or we can enhance the functionality of your AP team by providing this particular technology. And so we're using a combination of Azure to be able to store these particular invoices for the clients. What attracts a lot of customers to our software system is they want to eliminate manual paper processing. So a lot of times when businesses, businesses have expenses, right? So a lot of time when these businesses are making purchases, they are also being invoiced as a customer. They need a way to be able to manage um, that spending within their business. So complete software allows them to have a centralized location of all of their vendor invoices. Again, we extract that software and then we integrate with the client's accounting system so that they can then go ahead and do all their financials at the end of the day. So we attract a lot of people who want to lessen the cost of certain finance softwares. One example is Sage Intact. Sage Intact is an enterprise accounting system and per user cost, it is $1,000 for each user to actually be able to be licensed to use Sage Intact. So by having complete software is that middleware software we're actually eliminating and minimizing the cost that they would need to have their AP, to have each member of the AP team on Sage Intact. So we provide a solution, a finance-based solution for accounting teams, accounts payable teams, procurement teams, et cetera. So what is an enablement? What is enablement and what is an enablement specialist specifically? Um, so we could, what we do is a number of different things. We wear a number of different hats um, and we're, we're working with a lot of different teams across the business. Clearly, as defined, we clearly define the purpose and scope of a customer's journey. So we provide, we may provide onboarding, we may provide continued support of the software system, and that's through the entire life cycle. So throughout the sales, throughout their entire journey, um, and we expect them to be lifetime customers of ours. We also provide some success initiatives, um, just making sure that all the departments are aligned and working towards the same goal and and objectives. So you may find that, you know, in enablement, you may be working with development, you're going to be working with HR, you're going to be working with marketing, you're going to be working with sales. We are that 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 middle person that's just making sure that we're managing all of these goals across all of the teams. So we're just we're here to provide that basic support need. Here is what a typical week for me would look like. So as far as enablement, my specific part of the business, I am providing implementation of the iComplete software to a variety of our different customers. And I may be managing, you know, four or five, maybe six customers at a time. And it's not a simple implementation. It does, it is project based. So it does go through project phases. So we may have like a design phase, we may have a build phase where we're building out the software. I'm working very closely with our clients' accounting departments to kind of build out a software structure. So typically throughout the week, I am in a lot of meetings, as you can tell. Uh, we have a lot of, I may do demos. Okay, so let's take a look, for example, on Monday for this particular week. This particular week, I start off early in the morning with a demo. Um, and so I'm just helping the sales team, again, enablement, providing enablement to our sales team, helping them provide demos. And then throughout the day, I may be checking emails and some of these emails do require a little bit of research. I may have a brief catch up with one of my colleagues just so we can catch up on the day-to-day -day work. But then the rest of the day, I'm, I'm reviewing these projects. I'm trying to make sure that whatever phase of the project that we're in, that I am keeping up to date and that I'm keeping on task and I'm also keeping my customer on task. So considering that I'm mostly involved with 
designing their software system. I'm involved with building out that software system and teaching that software system to the customer. This can take, you know, a couple hours just for me to be able to do some research and then, you know, show my research and my findings to that particular customer. And then, you know, I'm doing this for multiple customers during the entire week. So you'll see that in this particular schedule, I have different color coding to basically help me just align with my goals for the week and just make sure I'm aligned with my customer goals and that I'm also keeping communication internally with our team just to make sure that they are aware of some of the things that are happening throughout the week. Um, a lot of the customers that we work with currently or are a lot of nonprofit customers. We may work with a lot of healthcare customers as well. Um, particularly, we work with education as well. So I'm working with directors, I'm working with accountants, I'm working with bookkeepers. And I'm just basically making sure that I'm keeping a clear line of communication between all of us and that I'm making sure that I'm reaching, again, reaching their particular goals. I also want you guys to know before I get on to the next slide, if you guys have any questions, please make sure to put your questions in the chat. We will have a time at the end of the session to be able to answer any questions that you may have as far as what implementation may look like. So let's talk about the lessons that we learn throughout you know, just providing implementations across the board to our customers and what's very important and what they're looking for and what they're seeking. So first off, I think it's very important to give yourself and other people compassion and grace when it comes to performing these implementations because every implementation that you do is actually gonna be a customized experience for that customer and no one implementation is going to look the same. So, you know, things are going to happen as long as you're being transparent and you're keeping a clear line of communication open with your client, then, you know, things are going to be smooth. You want to also make sure that you're documenting everything, everything that you're learning. If you come across any issues or if the system may break, you want to make sure that's notated and that you follow up with action immediately. Um, you want to make sure that you're reaching out to the right support teams. If you need to reach out to development to make a change in the product, then that's something that you're going to want to do. Don't wait on that, basically. You also want to make sure that you're catering to the needs of the clients and the partners. So the reason that the clients reached out to our company is because we need to solve a problem that they have, right? Nobody's going to want to purchase software that they have absolutely no need for. They're taking the time to go through a product demo with you. They're taking the time to build an implementation or project plan with you. And they're taking the time for you to help them design and build that system. And they're also gonna to wanna to test that system. So while you're testing that system, you wanna make sure that you're always constantly catering to their needs. Make sure that you're listening and that you're actively listening, not just listening to respond, but you need to really try to understand what their needs are. You also want to always follow up with your, your clients, and you also want to do this in a timely fashion. You don't want to wait, you know, one to two days to follow up with your client when they need answers from you right away. Follow up with them, make sure you keep transparent with them. And again, you want to make sure that you're keeping a clear line of communication with your clients because ultimately building that personal relationship with your client is what's gonna matter at the end of the day. This is a big one, I think. Um, and you know, not just for implementation, but any kind of technology role that you enter, but you don't just want to learn about the software. You don't wanna know just what it does. You want to know a little bit more about the industry and how it impacts your clients. What are the industry and client impacts that this implementation is going to have for your client? And how is it going to make their life easier? Um, just like with the demos, before I perform a demo, instead of just providing like a straight line demo or a uniformed demo, 
I'm actually researching the client and their business. And I want to learn a little bit more about their industry so that I can tailor the demo um, to their needs and make sure that it's, it aligns with their goals and their objectives. Also, don't be afraid to share ideas with your stakeholders. So your stakeholders can be the client, your stakeholders can be your boss, the CEO, um, the VP or the executive board. You just want to make sure that if you have ideas that are going to make the business better or make businesses um, business processes better, then you want to go ahead and highlight that and share that because what one person knows, the other person doesn't. So just keep in line with that and just make sure that you're always um, just trying to open up your mouth and you know get your get your voices heard. You also want to maintain and manage your expectations. And I should have asked, um, I should have added, you need to set your expectations from the very beginning. Um, if you set your expectations from the beginning, then you will have a clear line to maintain and manage those expectations. If you start out with an implementation and you don't have clear um, expectations set for the client, then the project can turn left and you're going to be spending way more time than you anticipated on the project because there's just so much being added or de deducted from the project and you want to make sure that you're keeping up with that particular time frame also do your homework i just mentioned you know before i do a demo i'm learning about the customer i'm learning about their industry and how it impacts the client but you also want to do your homework um, as far as when they tell you that they have a need for something, you want to make sure that your software can meet and address those needs. And you're going to have to do some additional homework internally and externally. If, you're, if our software can't do something, or I think that we can't do something, I'm actually going out and I'm taking a look to see if there are other software similar to ours that performs the same functionality. And if it does, then I say, hey, development, um, you know, this particular software that performs this task for our clients does this. Do you think this is something that we can implement into our software? Also, when you're implementing to the different softwares, so some of the accounting softwares that we integrate with could be NetSuite, QuickBooks, Sage. Um, there's multiple Sage products that we integrate with. We also integrate with uh, Xero. So we can integrate with a vast variety of different programs. And then also we perform API integrations. So the API integrations can be a little bit more complex because it does require some development. It requires some software development. And the software development is gonna be tailored to that customer's specific program. So what you'll learn, especially in the space that I'm in, a lot of our customers, especially nonprofit customers, customers that work with the city, they actually have a software system that is actually customized to them and they own that particular software. And so there's no out of the box development work that you can um, do. So this is going to require a lot of homework and research on your part. You also want to test before you implement the product. You want to make sure that whatever information is being transferred over to the customer's integration is actually going to successfully post to that client's system. Um, you don't want to have any errors. You don't want to get to a point where you're in user application testing and there was something that you missed because you didn't truly test the product and now the system doesn't work and now you have a group of clients on the call with you and they just wasted an hour and a half or a two hour session um, trying to get the just trying to get the product to work. So if you can emulate the customer's true demo environment, test that environment, and then you can go on and do your user application testing, which is another phase of the project. Also, you want to understand the full journeys, right? So you want to understand exactly from start to finish, how is this going to impact the customer? And you don't want to think about as far as implementation. So for implementation, generally in our company, we start off with the sales cycle. So at some point, we have to sell the product. Once the product is sold, then we have to implement the product. And then once the product is implemented, then we move the 
customer on to customer success. So this is an entire journey that the customer is going through, and you're going to want to understand parts of the sales cycle, and you're also going to want to understand parts of the success cycle. As far as sales, you want to understand their process because you want to understand what what are they selling to the customer? What kind of discussions are they having with the customer? And you may get this information from a sales handover document that will be handed over to your team. Once you review that document, then you'll know exactly what you're going into as far as the implementation. And then you also don't wanna leave issues open before you transfer it over to customer success. You need to seek that implementation to completion before it moves on to that success journey because your customer success team is gonna ensure that your customer remains a lifetime customer and that they retain that customer over a period of time. So having a cust like just, you know, having a new sale is probably gonna be more costly to the business than having that customer renew their license or product with you year after year after year. And then of course, they're gonna become advocates of your software system if they're going to be with you for years at a time so you, you definitely want to understand what that complete journey looks like also you want to create relationships with everyone that's going to impact your client's journey so one example for that would be our customized api integrations so when we do these customized api integrations generally our development team is going to meet with their development team and they're gonna collaborate with each other to kind of build out what the ultimate end product is going to be. Just because you're implementing the product doesn't mean you shouldn't be involved in that beginning cycle. You need to be involved in that beginning cycle because ultimately you're gonna to need to understand what the client needs, um, what the client needs are, is the API integration gonna work if you were that particular customer? And then you wanna also be able to test that product um, as if you were your customer to make sure if you were sitting in their shoes, is the product gonna work as they intend it to work, right? So you want to make sure that you're keeping relationships with their IT team, as well as everyone that is a stakeholder for who's using the product. So your stakeholder, again, could be the accountant, it could be the director, it could be uh, the director of accounting, it could be a bookkeeper, and it could even be um, the lower levels, which would be like the accounts payable specialist, usually, depending on that, that the client's hierarchy um, within their business. So you want to make sure that you're creating relationships and even um, you want to continue on those relationships even after the journey because they could be repeat customers or again, they can um, be an advocate for your products. So always maintain that particular relationship. Then you wanna also ensure that you're always continuing your learning cycle yourself. So a lot of times with most products and most software, especially with cloud technologies, there's gonna be constant improvements made to the technology field um, and the technology industry. and ultimately your product is going to go through a level of growth and you're going to have to continuously be up to brisk with what your product is doing and you want to learn about these new technologies and how these technologies are going to ultimately impact your customer and impact your business i also want to note here too that i notice sometimes i hear complaints about this but sometimes i hear people complaining that they're there isn't a full on um, learning path about this particular product or they don't have like a onboarding program to teach them how to do a job. Not every company that you go to is going to have a classroom session for you to sit in for 12 weeks to learn the job. You need to be able to learn that job on the fly and you need to continuously be able to learn that job and be a, a self learner basically. Um, and ways that you can learn is you can go to your colleagues and ask them for help or ask them, hey, you've been working here for a while. Can you tell me how something works? You can also go to your customers. Sometimes your customers will discover things about the products that you don't know, or they may know more. They know more about their own software system that they're using. Mind you, we're doing an integration. 
So because they know about their software system, you can also go for them for lessons. One example I have is that when I first came on board with Complete Software, one of the first ERP systems that I actually had to learn, and mind you, no classroom, no classroom training on this, but I had to learn Sage Intact. And Sage Intact has what's called a smart event, which is like, it's like a development, it's kind of like a small piece of development within the product and you can uh, programming. So you can build like a code to kind of program certain events within Sage Intact. Well, I was new to learning Sage Intact, and one of the partners that I work with is actually an expert in Sage Intact. So when I was actually having trouble with learning how to create this particular smart event, I was actually able to go to this partner slash customer and actually ask them, hey, I started out writing out this code, but it's not working, and I see that you're an expert in Sage Intact and Smart Events. Can you take a look at this code and tell me what I'm doing wrong? And guess what? He actually came back to me with a correct code and told me exactly what I was doing wrong. So I was able to learn from my partner or customer. I was able to learn something that I didn't know and I, I wasn't able to get that lesson directly from with them within my business. So learning is collaborative and you can learn from everybody and you can learn from your neighbor next to you and you can learn from your customer internally or externally. So always try to remember to try to always keep up with your learning. And then last but not least, I think one of the things that was a major, you know, helped me up to my confidence was finding support outside of work. And I have a huge support network in, at work and I have great colleagues as well, but just being able to learn about technology from other people outside of work was such a great help. And largely thankful to Bridges and Tech for that. I got on LinkedIn, I challenged myself to network, network with people outside of work, and I found a great support community that I was able to learn. And I wish I had a, a community like this in my other jobs where I was learning technology and learning about their software and so forth. So, if you can find yourself a support group that, that is consistent and that you can learn from the people that are there, then definitely reach out and just join the group and make a commitment to attend all, um, if not most all their sessions, if you, if you have the time, not everybody has the time to do, to do that, but you can definitely find you some support. Alrighty, so we're going to get into some of the skills that are required. So I just want to let everybody know, I do not have any certificates in tech. I have an associate in computer networking, and um, I've applied to technology jobs throughout my life. And based on experience, I was able to get climb, you know, a different ladder in life in technology based on my skill sets alone. I didn't have to pay for an expensive certificate just to be able to break into tech. Just having some personable skills and a love for technology, a love to learn should be, I think, enough, not all the time, but it should definitely be enough to help you at least get you, your foot in the door. One of the things um, one of the skills I can say that you need to have is your ability to maintain relationships internally and externally. So with your colleagues, your boss, um, you know, the developers of the team, etc. You also want to maintain relationships with your partners or your clients and stakeholders of the business, again, internally or externally. You want to also have some clear communication skills. And even if you don't have clear communication skills, if you're like intermediate, you can still learn as you go. <laughs> Take the time to learn about, you know, better communication skills. You can do that on YouTube. YouTube is super free. You can use a dictionary. Um, a dictionary will help as well. Um, you, you know, just as it works for little kids, it can work for you. 10 days, 10 words a week that pertain to business learn those words, write a sentence in those, like Monday through Friday, remember in school, Monday you like rewrote the word, Tuesday you wrote the word in a sentence, by Wednesday you're writing a paragraph about those words, you know, take the time to kind of learn and have some clear communication skills. 
I think it's also important as an implementation specialist to um, have some great organizational and time management skills. When you're dealing with big businesses, when you're dealing with nonprofits, when you're dealing with accountants, especially, there is an expectation that you're going to maintain or, um, your organizational um, processes together and that you're going to attend meetings on time. Um, so, you know, that's a given. I think most job descriptions require that. You need to also have the ability to work independently. No one has time to sit with you and handhold you while you're doing your work. You need to be able to work independently. You need to make sure that you're looking up answers to your questions before you reach out to somebody else for answers to questions because they also, other people also have other jobs that they need to do. So you need to be able to work independently need to be able to organize your calendar and make sure that you're completing your work in a timely fashion and that you're meeting deadlines. You also need to be a motivated self learner. So I went into this in our last slide. You need to make sure that you're just continuously trying to learn and that you're going out of your way to learn new things. So that's important. Um, segue into the same thing this is a little bit redundant um but you need to have the ability to learn to understand and apply new technologies software companies are also implementing new software into the business there's literally technology and everywhere you're learning new crm programs um, you might be going from one cloud solution to another for example our company used to use aws as their cloud provider we're now using Azure. So two different cloud technologies. You need to be able to quickly learn and adapt to that new technology. And that could be for any kind of technology. I think the programming language that we used to use was JSON. Um, what do we use now? I think it was SQL and now we're using J uh, JSON. So again, you have to be adaptable. Um, proficiency in office space system so that's office 365 that's outlook that's word that's powerpoint you have to have at least a good level of proficiency in learning those systems you also need to have the same with your crm tools um, most crm tools they pretty much serve one function and that's to provide custom that's your customer relation management right so that's being able to look up customer um, information looking up their contact data putting notes that's pretty much the basic for all CRM systems. But once you do get a new CRM system, you're gonna to wanna to use it all the time and kind of learn a little bit more about that CRM. It's also important to encourage and motivate people in a positive work environment. Um, if you're one, if you're one that tends to, you don't wanna be, you don't wanna be the one that tends to gossip or you always have like a, you're always huffing and puffing when something new happens. You want to make sure that you're always encouraging and motivating the next person to be better because a positive work environment is going to make you want to go to work. You don't want to be in a position where you don't you no longer want to go to work anymore because it's just it becomes toxic. So I think that's a skill that's required for any job. For implementation, having good project management skills is going to be important especially when you're implementing a specialty software, um, because most likely you're gonna be working with, even though you're working with a handful of clients, the implementation process can take weeks, takes months, sometimes even years, depending on the system that you're implementing. Um, I think larger ERP systems like NetSuite or SAP or Oracle, those systems take a really long time to implement. So you wanna make sure that you have good project management skills to be able to manage the entire project, manage your customers, manage the stakeholders that are a part of the project, as well as um, any partners or colleagues that are involved in that particular project. And then I don't think I've mentioned this y'all, but Complete Software is actually a global based software system. They're actually based out of the UK and I'm actually one of five people that are working currently here in the US. So a lot of times we do have to get up and be on the computer at certain timeframes of the day. 
So for the UK team, if you come in, for example, at 8 a.m. in the morning, it's actually midday for the UK. And so, you know, you've got to be able to manage that particular time zone. Sometimes I work with clients in Australia and they may have like a deeper accent than I'm used to. But if you have the ability to maintain those cross-cultural relationships in a global setting, that skill is going to be very helpful for you because you need to be able to, to maintain relationships with people from a, di a diverse range of um, you know, cultural differences. You also should have good customer service skills, but I think, again, this is something that will benefit anybody in any business. And customer service doesn't have to apply just to the external customer, but customer service is going to also imply internally. How are you engaging with your colleagues? Are you treating them like they're your subordinates or, you know, how exactly are you treating them? You want to maintain good customer service relationship because people are people and they're going to help you if you help them and if you're nice to them. So for enablement, so as I mentioned, I'm doing particularly um, implementation, but there are different career pathways that you can take from enablement. Enablement means a different thing to different businesses. And so that job description could change depending on the business that you're a part of. So enablement can um, lead you to become an implementation consultant. So you're gonna ensure the successful implementation, management and completion of large products, projects and operations. It can also lead into becoming a customer success manager. So you're supporting clients as they transition from, you know, sales prospects to a paying customer and you're building that relationship with them and you're building that customer loyalty with them so that you have a long term relationship and reduce the possibility of churn. And if you're in the customer success space, you know that a churning customer is not a good thing. Thing. That means if you have a churning customer, it means the customer is more than likely not to return to your product the next year. And at that point, you're losing recurring revenue. And businesses do not want to lose recurring revenue. They want to keep up with that recurring new revenue at the same time that they're receiving new revenue. So that's where the customer success manager is going to take place. You can also look into roles as a customer support manager. So basically you're trying to create a positive experience with your existing customers. You're making sure that you're maintaining a line of support. If something goes wrong with their software, you're gonna be front in line to make sure that that, that issue was resolved and you're gonna make sure that it's resol resolved in a timely fashion and ultimately reducing the risk of churn. And then also business analysts, that's, that's something that can segue from an enablement specialist. So what you're doing is you're seeking out, you're developing, um, you seek out, you help to develop and implement strat strategic initiatives for improved efficiency and productivity across the business. So you're gonna be working closely with customers, stakeholders, people in the business. Business analysts may, particularly in our company, may reach out to a customer and see if a customer, customer would like to, um, the word is at the top of my head, but you know, they can be, they can give us like a custom, a customer success story. They can kind of be our highlight or our spotlight customer. And we're going to try and work closely with those customers to make sure that they're spreading a good word about our company and our products. And then it can also segue into being an onboarding specialist, which is a bit different from implementation, but you're just introducing users to your product. Um, this may also be onboarding for HR. So human resources, you want to introduce users and help them implement product or services across the business. And then last but not least, we have the project manager. Um, and this person is involved with overseeing the process of planning, executing and de delegating re responsibilities around organizational and client goals. So there's multiple different career titles and roles that you can lead to from enablement, or you can say that enablement um, it involves all of these particular roles and titles. 
So does anybody, oh, you know what? Let me go to this slide. I want you guys, if you can, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to connect with you and answer any questions that you may have. Um, so feel, feel free to, you know, look me up, find me, connect with me, ask me any questions, and let's, let's network together. And then do we have any questions? Yes, no, no questions. That was really good. Um, thank you. And I'm going to actually stop recording so we can get into this question.